Hello everyone, shall we start? Okay, we will start, okay? Today you have Hello, today you have you have you have you have you have you have the topic for today is about spinning around uh, a talks on general giddiness uh, in short B BPPV, which is benign proximal positional vertigo. Okay, uh, with me, my name is Tafne Samsu. Uh, uh, then with me is uh, Stella, and it's Stella. Right. Okay, the content for today about definition of giddiness, a type of giddiness, what is benign proximal positional vertigo, common vertigo, or BPVV causes, signs and symptoms of BPVV, risk factors of vertigo, types of vertigo treatment, and self management of vertigo. Okay, definition. Giddiness is often used by patients to describe non-specific symptoms, including lightheadedness, sense of imbalance, and feeling of blacking out. Or in Chinese, they call it Tao Gao Gong or Tao Chin. Or in Malay, they call it Mabo. Okay. Okay, anyway, uh, I just like to find any, I think, I guess everybody who has experienced giddiness, right? Yeah, right. Okay, steps of giddiness. Okay, the first one is a vertigo. Uh, four sense of motion, a spinning sensation, uh, disequilibrium, off balance, and or wobbly. La. And uh, pre-syncope, pre feeling of losing consciousness, uh, lacking out, lightheadedness, uh, vague symptoms, possibly feeling disconnected with the environment. Okay, what is BPPV? B stands for benign, does not cause further illness. You mean to say it doesn't spread or doesn't, uh, you know, going from places to places. Proximal, temporary or sudden. Uh, positional, related to changes in body position, for instance, like sitting down, standing up, or uh, even lying down, right? Uh, vertigo, the four sensations of uh, spinning. In short, it is an inner ear def defunction that causes dizziness uh, when moving head. Okay, what you can see now is a, a picture of your ear, the inner ear, right? Um, okay, you can see that uh, mainly for hearing and balancing. It's not just for hearing, for information for everybody. Uh, it's also for your balancing. If it is this, this thing is um, not functioning. Dizziness and feelings of unsteadiness uh, can cause when inner ear dump they function. I mean, it's not working. Hmm? Uh, normally, there are small stones, they call calcium carbonate, that live inside a sac within the inner ear. And they are important for balance. You see, it's not just for hearing, but it's also for balancing. Okay, small stones start to a sac of the inner ear being dislodged. Right? You can see right from the picture, right? There's a small, small, uh, small dot. Uh, that's a small stone. Sir. So it travels freely into the inner ear canals and stimulate the inner ear canals with certain head movement. Uh, see? When you move, they actually move. Their stone also move, right? So result in dizziness and spinning sensation. Okay, discussion. So BPPV cause is unknown. True or false? Anybody can answer me or can show me your hand? 
who say B P V V cos is unknown. Can you see the show hand? Sorry, All what right. does C B P V stand for? I came in late. Okay, I repeat that again. Ah, huh? B P V V mean benign proximal positional vertigo. Benign stand for does not cause further illness. Proximal means temporary and sudden. Positional related to changes in body position. Vertigo, the fourth sensation of spinning. In short, is an inner ear dry function. That means not working. Your ear is not in the inner ear is not functioning. That cause dizziness when moving your head. Understand? For instance, like you're sitting down, you're standing up, or when you lie down, you stand. Just try to sit up, position yourself, then suddenly it causes a giddiness. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. So now the question is BPPV cause is unknown. Yes or no? Can you see the show of hand? Or ever have you ever heard about vertigo? Uh Anybody have expert experience and see doctor because of giddiness? Or you don't you don't feel giddy at all? Never in your life never feel giddy. I'm sure you do, right? Yeah. Once in a while you feel giddy. Me too. Right? Okay. Lah. So we, we just advance a bit. Lah, huh? Okay. Common vertigo or BPVV causes. Okay. In most people, the cause is unknown, right? And there is often no precipitating cause. But it can follow viral infections or accident uh, causing the head, the neck, uh, injuries, right? Uh, uh, spontaneous, lah, huh? uh, head trauma. I think you see that uh, you just had a fall, right? Or maybe uh, ear trauma. You don't believe it. For instance, right? like for instance, you take a leaf from the ground floor to the top floor, or the top floor to the ground floor. What happened? Suddenly you feel your ear drop. You can't hear that there's a pressure. Yeah, this one sometimes can cause a giddiness. Anybody uh, over here ever experienced that? Going from a high story, going to going down, then you feel giddy, or maybe pressure on your ear? Wow, all okay. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Actually, yes. Everybody, even me, myself, also experienced it. Correct, eh, Stella? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody experienced it. Lah, huh? Yeah. Then infection or ear disorder. You see, the, your infection of ear uh, also can cause this uh, giddiness. For, uh, for instance, like many mineral disease, vestibular neuritis, ischemia, inflammatory swelling of the ear. This one also can cause uh, giddiness. Yeah. So other causes, this include ear surgery, after surgery, uh, keeping the head in one position for a long time. Maybe you, you stay like that, you never move. Yeah, can cause a giddiness also. Uh, uh, bike riding on a rough trail, like for instance, you uh, ride a bicycle, then go up and down, also can cause a giddiness, all right? Yeah. Or you some... Uh, uh, some exercise, uh, very intensity, like you run uh, for a very long time at a very fast pace, aerobic eh? exercise, and can cause a giddiness as well because of movement of your body. All right. Okay, I'll pass to Stella. Hi, I'm Nurse Stella. So now we'll move on to some of the common signs and symptoms of vertigo. So vertigo is a spinning sensation like what Samsu has explained earlier, the different kind of circumstances that you can experience giddiness. It can last from a few seconds to a minute or more. And in some cases, can last longer than one minute, means up to a few minutes. Uh, you may feel a loss of balance or unsteadiness. Um, you may experience nausea and vomiting for very severe cases that lasted very long. And some episodes can actually disappear for some time and then later recur again. Means it went away already, then it came back. And the symptoms can be aggravated by head movement, like what Samsung shared. 
So the next question we want to pose to you is, do you know who are at risk for this type of a tiger? Anybody has any idea who are more at risk? Have you encountered anyone who has it before and you think that they have some risk factors? Okay, we'll move on. Uh. So the risk factor of a tiger uh, can happen to anyone at any age. Um, but it tends to happen in people who are more than 50 years old. And if they are female or they have family members who have similar type of dizziness. Hmm. So um, if you have some deficiency in vitamin D or like you have diabetes or other history of having migraines like headaches or other um, autoimmune conditions or you're experiencing stress or high blood pressure, it can also cause giddiness. Yeah, but because today our focus is on BPPV, so um, it's usually um, more for more than 50 years old or female. Okay. Yeah, the next question is, do you think BPPV, which is benign, proximal, positional vertigo, has any treatment? Anyone has any idea? Just now, Samsu shared that this type of vertigo is caused by the calcium carbonates, the stones inside the inner ear that is being misplaced, right? So do you think there's a way that we can treat it and put the stones back in place? Do you think we can do that? Is there any cure for this? Not sure. Okay, we'll move on and see. Okay, so the treatment for vertigo is actually generally medication or we get a someone who's experienced to do the repositioning maneuvers. So at the early stage of a PPPV, the doctor may give you some medication to reduce the, the feeling of giddiness and the nausea. Uh, however, usually it's not given for long term and usually it will refer you to a physiotherapist where he or she will try to do the repositioning maneuvers. Um, we also, there's this name called at least maneuver. Um, they will help to reposition the small stones back into the set inside your inner ear. And sometimes the physiotherapist, after they do a few times ready, they will teach you some exercises that you can do at home to help you adapt to movements to prevent you getting more the giddiness. So, um, the, the prognosis for BPPV is that it can be managed successfully through the help of the, so the facial therapies to reposition, but it could also recur again in certain individuals. So, if it's not well treated or the repositioning maneuvers are, um, didn't help to re reposition the stones back, then the giddiness might come back again if the stones dislodge. La. So some of them might still feel giddiness even after doing the maneuvers. So to self-manage with high goal, um, first, No sound. Hmm? No sound, yeah. Can you hear me? Now can, only now can. Okay. Can you hear me? 
Now can. Just now cannot. I see the slides. Yes. Hello. I see can both see of your, you. Ah. Can see both your faces. Cannot see the slides, huh? No slides. Okay. Give us a while. Uh. Okay. Now can see? Yes, thank you. Ten. Okay, thank you for waiting. So you should get up slowly and sit at the edge to make sure you don't feel giddy. Then you stand up and walk. And then after the treatment by the physiotherapist, if the giddiness reoccurs, you should try to remain seated and still for a few minutes until it goes away. So you should avoid but that I'll teach you what to avoid. And then the most importantly is to um, know how to prevent falls due to the giddiness. Means your home environment, your safety. Uh, it has to be the house has to be kept clean and neat, no water spillage. Your shoes have to be warm with a proper footwear. That is anti-sleep. Your mats at home should have an anti-sleep backing. The light should be sufficient and adequate. And things that you shouldn't do, which is on the right side of the screen, is you should avoid sleeping on the affected ear after the treatment. This is to avoid the stones from falling out of the sack. And then to avoid any physical impact on your ear, such as hitting the ear, digging the ear, shaking your head. That's why you should avoid excessive head position that will provoke the recurrence, the attack, which means you avoid putting your head backwards like that and then bend forward to tie your shoelace and all that, all this drastic movement to the head. Okay, because like I say, the stones can dislodge and the symptoms will recur again. So even after the treatment by the facial therapist, we need to be careful. So when should you see a doctor? When you experience any recurrent, sudden or severe, or prolonged unexplained dizziness or vertigo. So, if it's very short term, uh, uh, as usual, and you can manage, but if it always happens, it's getting worse, you cannot function normally, you cannot even walk straight, don't know what is the reason, you should see a doctor. And when should it be an emergency care when the giddiness or the vertigo that you experience comes along with a new headache? Severe headache with fever or a lost vision or double vision. You have hearing loss. You have trouble talking. Your legs and arms are weak. You have some loss of consciousness, uh, you feel like you're going to fall down or you have difficulty walking or have any numbness or thinking feeling on your, um, in your hands or one side of the body. Because dizziness is a very common um, symptoms in many other conditions. So we want to rule out that the possibility of stroke so if you have any of these symptoms um, other than on top of the giddiness, then you should seek emergency care. Understand? Okay, so this is the end of the health talk. We're quite fast today. Um, we don't want to complicate too much, but if you have questions, we will do the Q&A. You can on your mic. Or if there is anything you want us to go through again. Maybe to recap, uh, like Stella was saying, right? So it's good sometimes if you feel giddy, you know, you know, the thing doesn't go away. Uh, can you, it's good for you to see a doctor to determine whether you got a B, PBV, or, you know, it could be sometimes hypertension, uh, you know, 
there's a lot of possibility. So it's in order for us to rule out, right, whether you are having a VPV or vertigo, sometimes we call it, it's good to see a doctor, right? The worst scenario, uh, sometimes uh, we do come across uh, patients, right, come to our uh, uh, SGH, uh, no, they end up having a stroke, right? So don't um, don't take things for granted. Lah. It's good for you to seek treatment, okay? Any anyone here ha have a hypertension taking hypertensive medication? Ah, guess, uh, Miss Peggy. Uh, you know, have you ever experienced giddiness when you have a you know high blood pressure? Yes. So, uh, I just want to check with you. So, uh, this uh, uh, what I go uh, and this uh migraine is it linked to hypertension? You, if you, uh, just now I did mention, sometimes migraine uh, can cause uh, hypertensive also. Then sometimes uh, it leads to vertigo as well. Yeah, you can Google that actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me share the slide on the types of giddiness again. Okay. So these are the different types of giddiness. When we say vertigo, right, it's a false sense of motion. You feel like you are spinning. It's not the real motion. Nah. You feel like you are spinning. Um, so the topic that we went through just now was specifically for BPPV kind of vertigo, which is when the stone is dislodged that caused the vertigo feeling. But there are also many other illnesses can cause vertigo, which is this sense, false sense of motion. Some of them may feel a different kind of giddiness, which is disequilibrium, which is you feel like wobbly, wobbly, like cannot balance. Okay? They may not describe to you as the head spinning. They will just tell you like, why when I walk, I don't feel like I can balance properly. Then pre-syncope is before you're going to pass out. You feel like you're going to pass out. Okay? Going to lose consciousness. Then this lightheadedness is when you have very vague symptoms. You feel like um, you are a bit disconnected. They call it disconnected with the environment. Like, Little bit, little bit, you feel like floating, floating like that. But not like vertigo. Vertigo, you feel yourself is spinning. So there are many, many different kinds of illness can cause a different types of giddiness. Hmm. You may not be able to um, differentiate them or explain in exact words to the doctor, but... um. You do not need to follow the definition here. You just need to know when it's important to seek medical treatment and um, get them to assess what kind of giddiness they're going through and what is the possibility of the cause. Uh, I do come across and uh, res patients refer to ENT, ear, nose, throat. Right? So uh, one of the way is that you close your eyes and you see if the room is spinning. Uh, right, the thing is like really spinning. You, you close your eyes, that thing really spinning. The whole around you, surrounding you is all spinning. That's called vertigo. Lah. Means you feel that you are moving like that, but actually you're not moving. There's a false sense of motion. Mm. So this is just um to let you be more aware about the different types and the possibility. And if those who have ever had BPPV before, then you know that there's a chance of recurrence lah, and um, there's a way to manage it. So um, for you to share with the people around you and for you to take note. Okay, maybe I have a question for all of you. Uh, if you want to uh, stand up, you're sitting down, you want to stand up, can you do uh, very fast pace or you have to do it slowly 
Just now, okay. Stella was saying what you need to do. Slowly. Yeah, you need to. Okay, it says slowly. But, and also, when you're sitting up, wait for a minute before you're standing up. Right? Okay. And then, uh, for instance, uh, a lot of moment you like, uh, you want to do some exercise. Good. Exercise is good. But then again, it's good for you to get um, a second opinion. What type of exercise that you can do? Yeah. So those uh, acrobic are not for everybody. Okay. Because a lot of movement. So it's good to uh, get advice from the doctors lah before you take these activities. Right? Okay. So, uh, if there are no questions, sorry, this is our our community health host, the Sing Health Health SG team. Uh, you are welcome to call the hotline if you think that you have some health issues or chronic diseases that you wish that the nurse can help to monitor or you have things that you want to clarify like medications. Uh, you can call this hotline under the green color if you stay under these precincts. Okay, the Southeast region is covered by us. We have other teams by the Changi Hospital nurses under the East region and the Northeast region covered Sengkang and Pongo. So you can take down the email address for the com partners or you can take down the hotline for the individual participants to call in to inquire if they can you can be enrolled into our team. Take picture, take picture. <laughs> the camera is good. Okay, and these are the services that we cover. Uh, we do general uh, health and geriatric assessment, chronic disease management. We manage your medications to teach you how to take them correctly. Uh, we do some case management and coordination, which includes referrals if there is a need to. Social prescription means we try to link you up with the community activities and services that can help you lead better, better lifestyle. Um, we also support the caregiver um, to help them manage at home. And for those who um, are keen to do their advanced care planning, to voice out what are their preference for their future care. And for other um, people who want to be interested in preventive health, such as um, what are the things they can do to manage their weight, be it is to gain weight or to lose weight, or they're keen to quit smoking, um, or you know someone who's prone to falls and you want to help them to prevent falls, we can do the assessment and um, find ways to modify your home. And also, um, like I say, advanced care planning. So these are the services that we can, communicate, uh, we can provide to you. So if you think that we can help you, yes, just on the hotline, you can call in, okay? Stella, can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. uh, is this service free? Ah uh, yes, yeah. so currently our services is um hundred percent funded by MOH. So currently there is no fee incurred. Yeah, so please make use of us. Yeah, <laughs> come and join. Come and join us. Okay? okay, we are from the we are nurses, and then uh, of course we try to help you as much lah. Huh? Thank you for your attention. I think um. Let me try if I can share the feedback form because every time after our health talk, there's a feedback form that we can we will share, right? Give me a moment. Uh, let me stop share. Let me see if I can share the QR code. Oh. 
Ok. So I think those who have pre-registered, you all should have already um, pre-registered. So now um, this is the QR code on the right side for the feedback form for our community health talk. You can scan this QR code to give us feedback. Any more questions? So those who wants to listen to Chinese on the Mandarin version, you'll be next week on the same topic. Maybe the Chinese so you have more questions. 那些要听华语的是在下个礼拜哦,星期一一样两点到三点。Okay, everybody has scanned the QR code for the feedback. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for the time. Thank you very much, CC. So we will see you next week for the Mandarin version, okay? For those yeah. who are interested. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Thank you. See you next week.